So this problem really struck me when I was just walking around Spider-Man Miles Morales with an RTX 3080. It was only pushing about 60 FPS with ray tracing. I know what the first thought is, like ray tracing is really demanding, so 60 FPS is acceptable. But if you look at the stats in the top left, the RTX 3080 was only at like 60% usage at 1440p with ray tracing. So that must mean the CPU that I use in this system, the Ryzen 5900X 12 core processor that is only from about three years ago, couldn't provide enough frames for the RTX 3080. And this isn't the only example of it, just a recent one is in Remnant 2 or even in The Last of Us Part 1. Like, like, what's up with that? Why in the past few years have we seen games that look visually very impressive to games that we see now, which also look visually impressive, but now it seems like the GPU is less and less useful as it relies on the CPU to access its full potential. I feel like the CPU limitations in recent games is one of the most overlooked issues that is currently going on, especially in like reviews. If someone is reviewing a graphics card, they use the best CPU that they possibly can, and that will basically brute force all of the issues that games are having with CPU usage. But what if you're talking about the normal person that has a normal budget and doesn't have the absolute latest and greatest CPU, but still wants to get a recent GPU? What's even weirder is games are using even more of your CPU than ever before. Just like walking around in Cyberpunk here with the 5800X3D, so a very fast CPU. Just walking around here, you can see that it's up to about 80% usage. That means it's using, what, six or seven cores on the 5800X3D. This level of CPU utilization and control is really only made available to developers because of DirectX 12 and Vulkan APIs that allow devs to access as much of the CPU as they possibly can. But you would think that this level of control and this level of CPU utilization would result in games giving more FPS rather than less. But if you go back in time and look at some DirectX 11 games, visually still look very impressive and can push way more frames while utilizing less of the CPU. Like this is exactly counter to what you think would be going on at this point in time. Just because a game can use more of your CPU cores doesn't mean it's actually going to perform better. It's possible that a lot of these problems are being caused by new features that we are seeing in games. Obviously, a lot of the new games that are having CPU utilization issues are actually built on Unreal Engine 5. And we've talked about the second Remnant having CPU issues, but so did the first game built on Unreal Engine 4. So just as an example, Unreal Engine as a whole does have CPU issues and compounded this in Unreal Engine 5 with features like Nanite and Lumen, which use more and more CPU than we've previously used before with older versions of Unreal Engine 5. So just in general, the CPU usage is going to be higher and more demanding. And what's interesting, at least to me, with Fortnite, having Nanite and Lumen in the game doesn't seem to have these same issues because this isn't exclusive to Unreal Engine 5 itself. Other features that games are getting, like ray tracing, in general, uses more of your CPU than just rasterization in a game. And newer games are using higher and higher quality textures and meshes for objects in the game to make the environments and things you interact with more and more detailed. And with higher quality meshes and textures, that actually also uses more of your CPU. And that is because of the sheer amount of data that your CPU has to manage for your system. When you look at a game and it's like 100 gigabytes, your CPU has to process gigabytes and gigabytes of data to make sure that it's going into the right places. As games get bigger and bigger, they also most likely are going to use more and more of your CPU as it needs to compress and decompress all of this data. Which really gets me into the elephant in the room is this doesn't happen in every single game. And when you think about it, CPUs are just general computing devices in your system. They're supposed to be able to do everything. They probably just can't do everything 
very efficiently. So that means we use CPUs when there's basically no other option to compute a certain task that we want to get done. And think about this like before GPUs had hardware video encoders and decoders built into them. So if you wanted to render out a video or record a video back in the day, we used to use software encoding on your CPU. But nowadays GPUs do that in our systems and they, they do it way faster and way at uh, way lower power than our CPUs had to before. Also GPUs before they had ray tracing acceleration on them, we actually used to use CPUs to do ray tracing in like 3D modeling programs or animations. This is going somewhere, so just stick with me here. If you logically think about it, if games are using a lot of our CPU, but we're not getting like, you know, frame rates that we'd want out of a decent power CPU, then that probably means games are falling back to general purpose computing in order to get a job done that we don't have a better way to process it. That could mean on this hardware that it doesn't have specific acceleration in order to do these tasks properly. So that's one angle, or it could mean that games genuinely aren't optimized right now. And what I mean by optimization in games, it's possible that it's, they're not leveraging the full potential of the hardware that's available to them. And this could be because of how the software is made. And just an example how this could be taking place right now, any developer can use Unreal Engine 5 to build their games if they would like to do so. And this, like Unreal Engine makes games beautiful. It has amazing technology, but the fact that any developer can use this engine to its fullest extent means that you don't have to necessarily know the engine in and out in order to get results from it. It basically lights itself. You don't have to have developers go around and put lights at every single point because the Lumen lighting system in Unreal Engine 5 will reflect the light properly and fill the space to get it how you want it to look like, if you want it to look lifelike. So that's how it could speed up the development process, but this means that those same developers don't have to actually build every aspect of their games in order to make it run as efficiently as possible. That clearly shows when so much of the brunt is being put on the CP right now for general purpose computing, that things aren't being optimized properly. And what's so funny is the most common form of optimization in games has been falling back to using upscaling like DLSS, FSR, and XDSS from Intel is also a general purpose way of optimizing games. However, upscaling only decreases the load on the GPU and doesn't really affect the CPU usage in a game at all. The resolution doesn't really change how hard your CPU has to work. It's like you can only crank that DLSS slider so much before, hey, like your CPU can't handle the game anyways, which seems very pointless and revealing in the grand scheme of things. I will say though, what is cool with all of this, even though CPUs are struggling in games right now, and even a 5900X, can't push enough frames for an RTX 3080. Even a 5800X 3D, which just came out a year ago, can't push enough frames for an RTX 3080, which you can find on the used market for about 400 bucks right now. What is cool is even though we're seeing these problems at this current moment, is I think there's still a lot of room for improvement for developers to make in games that will help them move along. Because in the grand scheme of things, APIs do allow for a very great range of control for developers. Things should only get better from here. But features like ray tracing, nanite, lumen, high quality meshes and textures and large amounts of data in games, all this stuff is relatively new. I would I would argue that games do look better than ever before. Do they look better to the point that it's worth the performance hit? I wouldn't say so. I think there's still a lot of improvements that can be made with these technologies in order to get better over time. And I think the, the developers that can conquer that and get better are probably going to be the ones that succeed in the end of things because we don't want to see games like Immortals of Avium, where it's like, yeah, it's very GPU demanding, but if you just have a CPU that's just, you know, like a few years old, all of a sudden you can't even run Immortals of Avium 
properly. And this just can't be good for the game's health. This isn't good for the gaming industry to have games that run like freaking garbage. Typically in the past, like a CPU, you could typically buy a higher end one and it would last you for, you know, generation, maybe even like two GPU upgrades before you felt like it was necessary to upgrade your CPU that is slowing you down. But it doesn't seem to be the case anymore. It seems like you have to upgrade your CPU in order to keep up with the demands that our games are, games are having for it. Why is the CPU feeling almost more important than the GPU nowadays? And one of the main issues with having to upgrade your CPU frequently, sometimes you can't just drop in a new CPU, like, and you have to upgrade your motherboard and your RAM, maybe even your power supply just to handle a new CPU upgrade to keep up with graphics performance. I think arguably a lot of people would not want to have to upgrade their CPUs when CPUs that are just a few years old or struggling in new games to deliver, you know, just 60 FPS, something that every CPU that are that is released in probably the past few years should be capable of. But I am optimistic that optimization is probably going to improve with time because of the level of control that's available and being in a competitive industry probably means that games hopefully will start running better into the future. And some faith to me with this is with how DirectX 11 was years and years ago, when DirectX 11 first released, I don't think it was, you know, the, the move to use it all the time. But over, over time, it, it we've seen with a lot of developers in games seem to understand how it works. And we see good performance on a large range of hardware. And I think eventually DirectX 12 and Vulkan could probably end up into that same park. Although I am hopeful that things are going to get better I could definitely be proven wrong and wouldn't be the first time, but I want you guys to let me know what you think in the comments. Like, is this alarmingly high amount of CPU usage in games and relying on general purpose computing instead of, you know, more optimized processes? Is this kind of showing the current state of game development, technology, and optimization that's going on? because if you rely on general purpose computing on your CPU, is there a full understanding of the technologies that is available to us? But anyways, that's, that's all I got for you guys. And uh, I'm gonna call it there. Y'all have a good one. I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.